Hello, I'm Richard Vobes, the Bald Explorer. This is another of those My Stories. Last time I was telling you about the time I was an extra and I'd worked in a number of television programmes uh, back in the mid to late 80s and early 90s. Um, programmes such as Poirot, uh, The Bill, I think I mentioned about how The Bill worked in the previous episode, London's Burning, Waiting for God, and numerous other programmes, Lovejoy, EastEnders, various, various different things. Um, in many ways, the heyday of British television, um, uh, although I think a lot of people think of the heyday, particularly in the 70s with certain sitcoms uh, that we used to have. But anyway, for me, it was, a, it was a fascinating and interesting time and a time to learn how filming and television really worked. I had been writing ideas for television and sending them off, and now I was actually in television albeit not a proper and official actor, was the lowest of the low, really, a walk-on. But a walk-on, an extra, you still had a part to play. And, and sometimes it could be quite humorous. So I thought I would share with you uh, a couple of stories, really, about those days and on different episodes. <clears throat> now, I mentioned the bill. Then there was a case when, in fact, it was the very first day that I was working on the bill as a policeman. And just on the side, one of the days going up to Bulby Road, uh, <laughs> I would drive up t uh, through um, Barnes, it was, which is set in South London up towards Hammersmith and go across the Hammersmith Bridge. And I remember one day the police, the real police that is, were out there with their speed cameras. And uh, <clears throat> I must have been going a little bit faster because no doubt I was late. And they caught me for speeding, oh dear. And the irony was, of course, they got out the car and I said, oh, I'm so sorry. They said, you realize you were doing 33 and a 30 mile an hour speed limit, this sort of thing. And I said, oh, um, I'm really sorry about that. I said, that, you know, the irony is, uh, within an hour, I shall be wearing the same uniform as you. And they said, oh, are you, a, are you an officer? And I said, or a policeman or whatever. I said, no, no, I'm, I work on the bill. And they were so interested. They said, oh, really? I said, yes, not as an actor, but as, a, as a, an extra. And they were asking me all the questions. And I was saying, oh, it's interesting looking at your radio and all the stuff. I said, it's amazing because I am basically a, a, a cookie cutter version of you. And so they found that quite humorous. They still, <laughs> they still charged me, not charged me, but they, you know, I was still fined and had the three points and what have you for my three miles an hour over. But it was an amusing conversation. Anyway, that was, that was later on whilst I was uh, very familiar with the bill, but I was less familiar on the very first day that I worked there. Marcel had rang up and said, I've got you this job on the bill. It's going to be great. So I went up to Balby Road and the first job that I did was out on location. Now, I can't remember if I mentioned this in the previous video, but if you rode a bike, if you could drive a car, if you could um, do anything other than just walk, it, you were deemed to have what they called special skills. Uh, a most ridiculous term really, but if you had special skills, it could often be the difference between 10, 20 or 30 quid um, extra on your fee. So if you could drive a car, you'd get a little bit more money. And I, you know, any, any time any of the, uh, the third assistant would come in and say, can anybody here drive? Hands would go up like this rapidly because it meant a bit of extra money. And they'd go, oh, okay, we'll pick you. Well, I was working on this particular day with a chap called Ricardo and me, Richard. So that was, that was uh, quite amusing to begin with. Ricardo had got his hand up quicker and so we were out and he was going to be driving. We were on location in a seedy part of London. I can't remember where it was. We all were minibussed to the location and we were given this, um, I don't know what it was, you know, police car of the time. It looked identical to the police car with the stripes and the blue lights and all the rest of it for all intents and purposes. Um, from the outside, it was a police car. And the scene that we were doing was some form of raid or something going on. 
and at the end of the sequence the, our police car was I guess to come screeching in we wouldn't have actually had the sirens going because they would have been dubbed on afterwards but we'd have the blue lights going and we just come in and and that's all it was we I don't even think we had to actually leave the car I'm not quite sure now it was so long ago anyway what I remember about this was that we were on quite a busy road on this seedy part of London and the film unit and the actual rest of the part of the episode was in some f form of enclosed estate which was on the opposite side of the road um, and not visible from where we were. So from where we were it was impossible to know that the filming was going on. Now we weren't involved in that, we just had to arrive so I know, don't really know what the sequence was or whatever it was. All I know is that we were there at the end of this point and so they were filming there, we were sitting in the car and it was a beautiful hot day, it was probably June or July and it was a beautiful hot day and we were parked up in our outfits, police outfits, the flat caps, ties, storno radio, the whole thing, me and my epilepsy 192, all of that, Ricardo in the driving seat and we were there primed, we were given a radio, one of these little walkie talkie radios, so that we could hear what was going on in the unit while they were filming in the other bits and we would every now and again our contact the third assistant would be going <coughs> okay uh, uh, guys <coughs> uh, we'll just let you know we're just filming such and such and they would film whatever it was <coughs> we'll get to you in about 20 minutes and this was repeated you know we get to you in about 20 minutes and then there were more hold-ups so we were sitting there for quite a lengthy time a good hour or two possibly waiting for our uh, starring role just to drive in and, and no doubt get out of the car and run into a building, I don't know. But anyway, the fun bit was the waiting. We were sitting, as I say, in this, this very grim part of London on a fairly busy road with the pavement next to us. And as I mentioned before, nobody knew, of course, that the film unit was round the corner. So for all intents and purposes, we were police to the general public. We were just sitting in our car waiting. And it was really weird because I'd never really appreciated the, um, the feeling of hatred that would come towards you when you're in that uniform. I sat there for the very first time in that police uniform, in the police car, and you would see people looking at us very suspiciously, um, looking at us as if we were something not very nice and I had a real appreciation at that point for the kind of job that the police do and the, the things that they have to put up with. Now I imagine after a while you get a bit thick-skinned as indeed later on when I was doing the bill and we had similar situations didn't really I wasn't really aware of it anymore but I do remember on that first day thinking people are looking at us and they really don't like us because of the car and the uniform well, uh, this went round the other way uh, because as the morning progressed, the heat was getting hotter and we were constantly told, yes, we'll just get to you in about another 20 minutes. And so we were sitting there and they said, oh, so hot. We had the windows wound down. We took off our hats. We're sitting there waiting, chatting away, having a lovely time talking about life, the universe and everything. And then as time went on, we loosened our ties and this sort of thing. And people would come up and they'd look at us. Uh, sometimes they would say, oh, um, excuse me, could you tell me how I get to so-and-so? And we would say, um, I don't really know. We don't know this part of London. Oh, and they would be a bit confused, you know, a policeman not knowing this part of London. Other times they would say, oh, I'm afraid my cat's disappeared. I don't know whether or who I should report it to. We said, well, um, probably at the police station, we're not real policemen. And people who had no concept that we were filming would struggle with that. What, what do you mean you're not real policemen? That's a bit bizarre, isn't it? Um, so that was quite funny. Uh, but the funniest part of it was, of course, as we got hotter and hotter and we'd taken our ties off and we, were, we put the seats back and we were just lying. I mean, we weren't policemen, so um, we didn't really think about this. But the people were looking at us and they must have thought, wait a minute, I pay my taxes. These are the most slovenly policemen. What is the matter with you? Uh, 
they must have had this really vague and well wrong impression of how the police go about their business not knowing that we were actors so it that was uh, that was quite funny i found that hilarious um another time that um i was dressed up as a policeman was for campion now campion is a, a series 1930s it was uh, with peter davison and uh, when you're on these period costume um, detective programs or any of these things where possible you're wearing as real real outfits you know the, the the so we had this very heavy woolen policeman's outfit I was always cast as a policeman as a bobby or a, a member of the army or something like that anyway this was 1930s uh, Peter Davison was campion and I and another guy wasn't Ricardo this time somebody else um, were policemen, 1930s policemen with this heavy outfit on. It was another beautiful sunny day, yeah. And at this time it was in Sussex somewhere near Uckfield as I remember it and it was this beautiful white country house, this 1930s art deco house um, down the end of a long drive. The, the drive came down a uh, fair distance and then had a sharp left-hand turn and there in front was the house and then at the end of the left-hand turn was um, a nice hedge of some description, as I remember it. So you would come down to the house down this sort of L shape. And um, <clears throat> again, we turned up, turned up in the morning, a lot of hanging about. There was filming going on in the house. And um, the third assistant came over and said, can either of you drive? Like a shot, my hand went up. I said, oh, yes, I can. She said, oh, great. Um, basically, we, there's a shot. We're going to film it probably last now. But there'll be a, a shot with um, the driver in this old vintage police car with Peter Davison next to you. Peter Davison's oppo in the back and the other extra in the back with you. So four of us in this little black police car. And we just want you to basically to arrive at the house. And I said, yeah, that sounds all right. Uh, no problem. And of course, we're hanging about waiting for this scene. We knew it was at the end. It was very hot. We're in this wool and all that. And we were there with a buffet at, at the teas and coffees whilst we were filming on location catering, which is fantastic. But hanging about. And the third assistant said, oh, at some point, you, you know, you may want to just have a look at the car or, you know, drive the car up and down so you're a bit used to it. And I said, yeah, that would be really good. Because I don't know whether you're like me, when um, you get into somebody else's car or you drive a hire car or whatever, you're so used to your own car, it takes a little bit of time just going, oh, where's this? And, and how does the clutch work? You know, where's the torque on this? And how are the brakes very immediate or are they soft? All those sort of things, you know, you just want to get used to it, don't you? So um, I kept thinking, oh, it'd be nice to get in the car, but um, that, that never really happened. So suddenly, we're, there we are, we're sitting around, and then we come to this one scene where we're supposed to arrive. And um, I hadn't seen the car, and I hadn't had a go in it, but I thought, well, that'd be all right, be fine, won't it? I was going to meet Peter Davison, who was Tristran in All Creatures Great and Small, and of course, he had been a Doctor Who. So um, he'd been somebody who I'd known and seen on the screen, never worked with him before. And it was nice to meet him. So it's like, hello, how are you? Yeah, no, fine, thank you. And just got this one scene. Now this car, this little black car with vintage 1930s car was was quite compact. So um, it was a bit like sitting in a Beetle. You're right on top of each other, quite intimate. So there's two seats at the back, just about, and two seats, small seats at the front. So I'm sitting at the front in the driver's seat. Peter Davison's next to me and we're sitting like this. We've got a radio in the back. Um, again, another walkie-talkie to, <coughs> okay, stand by, Peter. Uh, we're, we're ready to go for a take and all of that. And I'd seen the drive. It was a white gravel drive, um, lovely drive, straight, straight down L-shaped house, a white house, as I say, 1930s. And at the end of the drive um, was the film crew um, all huddled around the camera. The camera's quite low and they wanted this thing. So uh, the third assistant came up to me and said, right, OK. Um, so this is P Peter Davison as Campion has been called 
and there's this sense of urgency. So can you uh, go down the drive and just stop in front of the camera um, with a sense of urgency? Because this, this is actually the shot that would go at the beginning of the whole sequence they'd already filmed. So I said, yeah, that's no problem. So that was good. And I was sitting in there and the, the owner of the car who rented it out, rented it out to the film people, sauntered over to me and leant on the uh, door, uh, w th looking through the window, the uh, driver's window. And he said, oh, uh, he said, I, I hope you enjoyed driving the car. He said, I, I think I should have just mentioned um, one thing that you'll find useful. And I said, oh, right, yeah, no, no problem. Because uh, the car was actually running, it, it was already ticking over, so I didn't have to start it. Often they do that, you know, with vintage cars. And he said, yeah, just so you know, um, the accelerator and the brake are reversed. Back in those early days of motoring, they hadn't standardised where the pedals were. So although normally we'd have the accelerator on the right hand side and the brake in the middle, actually the accelerator on this car is in the middle and the brake is on the right. And I looked at him and I said, oh, right, OK. I had Peter Davison right here. I didn't want to show that I was slightly nervous about this one fact and that I was to hurtle down the driveway, turn a sharp 90 degree angle and then stop with a sense of haste um, in front of the camera with the lead actor, another actor and an extra in this car that I'd never driven before. So I went, yeah, no, oh, OK, that, that'd be fine. So there we are at the end of this long drive, waiting, and then suddenly the radio goes. <coughs> OK, stand by, we are recording, and turn over. Camera starts turning over. Our speed. That means that the uh, recording is all up to speed, or the camera is up to speed, because it, uh, it was on film, this. Action, action car. That's my cue. So... I've got my foot on the middle pedal, which normally is the brake, but in this case, it's the accelerator. So I put my foot down on that and it's fine. And I'm hurtling down this little lane, uh, the driveway, this white uh, shingles, uh, not sh uh, yeah, these yeah, shingles, I suppose. And uh, so I'm hurtling down there like this really quickly. I don't have to bother to change gear, I don't think, or maybe I did, went into second. I really can't remember. But I was hovering with my foot, which is normally the accelerator, um, uh, ready to go to the brake so that as I come round the corner, of course, I can just slightly brake and then accelerate and then brake in front of the camera, you know, and all of this. So I'm just like uh, puzzled by this. I didn't have to worry about the clutch, thank goodness. Anyway, so there am I. And this car is quite nifty little thing and it's going a bit faster than I actually thought it would. So I'm coming down like this. I've got Peter Davison on my side and the other two people in the back and I'm and driving like this and it's quite thrilling and it's quite exciting. And then suddenly before I realised it, the right hand bend had come and I used to at one point have a beetle and I knew that if you turn the steering wheel too much there's a danger of flipping the car over. You have to d do it a bit less aggressive. But I wanted to have that sense of haste so that uh, Peter Davison's character looked like he was there trying to get there urgently. So this bend starts to come up to me and I suddenly panicked. And I put on the brake to slow down. Of course, I'd gone into subconscious mode. So where I thought the, uh, what I, I pressed where I normally would press the brake, which of course was the middle pedal, which is the accelerator. So I put my foot on that. The car lurched even more forward as I turned. I panicked and managed to, to brake um, something that I would never want to do, and that is accelerate too much on a bend um, by pressing on what would normally in real life be the accelerator, but in this case actually was the brake. And so I managed to force my foot onto that to brake a bit and then to go back onto what would normally be the brake, but is the accelerator and accelerate this car. 
And then the next thing I knew is there's the film crew huddled around the camera and they're all looking at this car speeding towards them. I'm thinking, oh my God, I've got to do this strange maneuver again and bring this car to a halt. So hurtling along, they're coming up towards me and again, I'm breaking the instinct of a lifetime and I'm putting my foot on what I think is the accelerator but is actually the brake and I push my foot down and the car comes to a skidding halt just inches in front of the camera and you could see the crew visibly going oh like that at that precise moment of course we'd stopped there was a slight pause because I think Peter Davison thought we were going into the camera crew as well and then he suddenly remembered oh and he leapt out of the car I didn't have to as the driver all I had to do was sit in the car and oh my god my heart was thumping there was this sound outside going and cut then there was this moment where people check the gate uh, that's not a gate of the house that's the gate in the film in the camera in case there's a hair or anything like that they go check the gate and then there was do you want to do another one um and they said no no we'll have that one and the uh, first assistant passed by now normally the first assistant doesn't talk to the extras and things and he said nice bit of driving <laughs> Oh my God, I thought I was going to kill them all. Dear, oh dear. I do have other stories of my time as an extra. It was a hilarious moment. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to follow, like and subscribe and become a patron. Support what I do. I'll be out and about with more walks and heritage, landscape and nature. But till next time, bye bye.